Hey everybody, it's that's a lot of sodium coins, and today I'm gonna be going through all of my silver coins. Um, and this is just like they're generalized in that way. There, a lot of them are worth more than their silver value, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're uh, also like very fine silver. A lot of these are like not like differing uh, amounts of silver in them. But uh, yeah, so starting off, I'm gonna start off with like the rolls I have. Uh, I have a few rolls, all of them, um, came from my grandfather, I don't have any full rolls, besides my, um, 40% half dollars that are mine, so, this is a roll of, um, of dimes, and these are my Roosevelt dimes, I have a roll of those, this is a roll of Mercury dimes, you can see it's slightly, uh, over what's, uh, can be held, but... So that's like 52 dimes. Um, this is a roll of quarters. These are all Washington quarters. And this is another roll of Washington quarters. Uh, so they're all they're all silver. They're the 90%. And then I have these rolls of half dollars. And they're different. They're not all... This one is... Um, all uh is mostly 64s and then this roll this roll is uh walking liberties and benjamin half dollars uh the walking liberty is one of my favorite designs for coins see these are all the um the benjamin franklin half dollars that one also has a really cool design. The uh, older half dollars, they're all really cool. And then this is the design of the Walking Liberty. And that is the face, of the or the uh, front of uh, modern silver dollars. So, And speaking of silver dollars, with like all of the, uh, currently all the coins being released by the mint, that is a, that is a, kind of crazy what's going on with how quickly they sold out and i mean coins have always sold out quickly from the u.s mint but this this was like absurd and the amount they're reselling for which also a lot of reselling happens but i feel like this program was more specifically um it was gonna be something that was like most people can't afford a mint state 65 morgan dollar but hey, you can get this, so that does kind of suck, um, a little bit more than, uh, like, like, the Enhanced Reverse Proof, uh, uh, one ounce, uh, silver, um, silver eagles that were selling for over a thousand dollars, but, um, anyways, so here is a peace dollar, this one, the back is a little weird, um, but the front on this one is really nice, it's still a little scratched up, but it's cool, so, um, and then we have this. This was, um, uh, my dad gave it to me. Uh, he, his grandfather gave it to him, uh, so, when he was born. So, this is, uh, from a company which no longer exists, but it's, a uh, pretty cool. I can't find, like, this design. I found it on eBay a few places, but, like, I can't find, um, a ton of information on the actual place that made these. I know they closed down sometime in the 90s, but it's pretty cool um, round. This is one of my favorite coins. This is an 1802 real. Uh, this was another one of my grandpa's coins. Uh, this is Carolus the Fourth, and it was made in Mexico City. Uh, I don't know, uh, where is it? The mint mark is somewhere on here. There, so, uh, if you see right there, there's the M with an O over it, and that is Mexico City. So, this was made in Mexico City, and these were used in, uh, America for a while, just because the colonial coins, like, America wasn't creating a ton of, uh, its own currency at the time, so those are a lot more common. Than, let's say 1800 um like two cent or something so 
here, uh, this is a coin I got pretty recently. Um, this is an 1835 capped bust dime. It's my only capped bust coin. And, um, I say, I, I think I got it for a pretty good price. I mean, it's probably no better than a good four, but, um, it's still a, uh, coin that has, that has the full liberty. You can see the details in the hat, uh, you can see the date. Still has a lot of the, um, diamonds and the stars have some good detail. The back doesn't have very good detail, but you can still see the 10C and the shield. Um, so... I'd say it's a pretty good price for a capped bust coin. Uh, this, I love this piece dollar. The front, um, like opposed to this one, which the front was better and then the back was bad. This one, the front is a little um, scratched up and not really great, but the back is really pretty. So I really like this one. Uh, that's the only reason I didn't put it in my, um, the only coins. So this isn't technically all my silver coins because I don't include uh, the ones I have in albums. So I have uh, all the 20th century, uh, the typeset, so every kind of coin made in the 20th century that was silver, that you're not going to see here. And then also in my dime album, there's some silver dimes in there, but they're not like anything. That it, none of it is stuff that I don't have out here as well. So um, there are some duplicate stuff, but... And then here is my only Canadian silver dollar, and this was a Centennial one, and it is a proof, uh, proof like. I don't think it was proof, but um, that's a really cool coin. Uh, I still need to get the um, half dollar, the quarter, and the fish dime, uh, and also the nickel. So I'm not, I don't have all of them, but I have the cent, and now I have this. So. And this is a 1908 Barber Half Dollar. Um, I got this uh, a while back uh, from Big T Coins. So um, so it's pretty cool. This is just a Barber Half Dollar. And these are pretty uh, pretty cool. I like the design on them. Uh, like with the Barbers, the Barbers had a really cool design. And it's cool to see it like enlarged. Because if you're looking at like... Uh, a dime, you can't really see the same amount of detail as if you have a big one like this. Next, this is just a uh, really good condition dime, this or silver dime. This isn't uh, anything that special. Uh, this is my first ever coin that I ever found. I've had this since I was like little, since like way before I collected coins. I just had this because I thought it was cool. And I found it when I was like seven. Uh, so, but uh, years later, come to find out, it is in fact the war nickel. So, pretty cool. This is the only silver quarter that I've ever found in circulation. It's a 1958, which was a lower mintage year, but it's not like worth more than melt value. Unless it's in high mint state. This is the first coin I ever found uh, coin roll hunting. It's a 1967 40% uh, silver half dollar, Philadelphia. So, and that one does have some uh, interesting coloring on it. I wouldn't say pretty, but uh, interesting for sure. This is a Canadian five cent from 1895, or 1890, sorry. And these, uh, so these in like really good condition, these can get to be insanely expensive. Um, this is not in the condition to make it that expensive, but, uh, some of them that are <clears throat> in really good condition can sell for tons of money. This, this is, uh, probably my favorite, uh, silver dollar. Uh, this is in 1878, and it is proof-like on the back. I don't know about, uh, as much on the front, but the back is certainly, um, got some cameo to it, so that's really cool. This one just also has super nice coloring. It's a uh, San Francisco minted. Uh, and this one is... I don't know because the front has a few scratches, but it's probably AU or uh, low mint state. Ton of detail, a really good strike. Um, so you can see every detail in that. So that's why that one's so cool. These are all of the half dollars that I have found going through rolls of halves. These are the 40% ones. So, 
that's kind of cool, uh, that, like, just going through coins that I found, like, this is $200 worth of silver, and I got this for 10 bucks. so, because that's what, uh, the face value is, so that's kind of cool. This is a 90% half dollar I won, uh, kind of a while back. I like the back, I like the dark coloring. I know some people would hate that, but I like, I kind of, um, brings out kind of a cameo almost. Kind of highlights the eagle. Um, this, I got this in an auction from Michael Kittleware Coins. This is a 1943 foreign, uh, King George the Sixth. I like the coat of arms with the, uh, kangaroo and the emu. And in the older ones, the emu had its leg up, uh, on the top of the uh, coat of arms like the kangaroo does holding it up uh, I don't know why but I thought, thought that was funny so just kind of a random thing uh, this is um, a 1656 uh, or uh, 20 or 2019 but uh, uh, 1656 uh, Virgold, uh, Virgold Drake is the uh, is what the coin is called, and this was made by the Australian Mint. Dates upside down, so this was an East Indian Tea Company ship, which, uh, if you don't know what the East Indian Tea Company was, that was a company which, uh, it traded in a lot of things, uh, precious metals was one of them, and also, uh, tea, and they were, it, they were the most powerful company in the world, possibly of all time, and they, uh, they controlled uh, entire armies and entire countries. Uh, the British Raj was basically controlled by them for several hundred years, as well as a lot of the West Indies, uh, as well as just the Indies. So, and this uh, on this side you can see um, Queen Elizabeth's face, and then also just the treasure and uh, the ship uh, a little lifeboat trying to save some guy so that is a really cool coin i love the shipwreck series so i won that from scott Derby. so that's pretty cool um i believe i hope i hope <laughs> i hope that's right if not i feel bad but I, I believe that's who i got it from uh this is a fiji the two dollar 2012 um these are the silver turtles uh it says fiji taku but taku just means turtle um, in one of the, the, whatever the, uh, language is in Fiji, um, and it is, it is three nines fine silver, and I love the design, um, the amount of texture on the water is kind of crazy, so that's really cool. I will say, since I have gotten it, it has started to get, uh, some, uh, spots on it, so that is unfortunate, but it's still a really cool coin, and it is still in crazy shape. Uh, so it's still super cool, and I got this from uh, the Silver Turtle, which uh, fittingly, so this was his, I believe when he won, he got his uh, thousand subscribers, he gave that away. Um, and then these, uh, these are two Canadian Silver Quarters that I got uh, not too long ago, so these are, uh, I won these two, so these are pretty cool. These are my first uh, Canadian silver quarters, and the caribou is pretty cool. So, this this is um this is an Inglehard bar, which I think is super cool. It's a um Inglehard bars like there. I just like them. Also, I like the bars with serial numbers, just cause um well, it's kind of unique. You don't have any other uh, bar with that same serial number, so that's kind of interesting. Um, but, yeah, I think the bars are pretty cool. Uh, it's not in great shape, like, it's not one that I have in a case like a lot of my other bars, but... Um, this, this is something pretty cool. So, this was at the 2018, or was it 2019? Uh, 2019, uh, American Numismatic Association, they do, like, a seminar every year. I believe in Colorado Springs. Uh, that's where they're based out of, and they have... Uh, they did a demonstration on, uh, I believe, uh, screw presses or maybe hammer presses, but, um, that were, uh, based off of the silver bracteates, uh, and you can read that if you want, that's just some information on what it's modeled after.
And then there's a little knight, and there's the A and A, and then M F X I X, which is 2019 in Roman numerals. And they don't have a back that is just uh, where it was stamped. So, uh, and then continuing on here, this is a silver dime I won. And what's cool about this one is it does it is struck through Greece. And then these are two one gram silver bars. One is the U.S. Army, and one is. Uh, just a little another design so these are pretty cool the uh, one grams uh, if I do a giveaway I'll probably just throw one of those two in there um, next time I do a giveaway so make sure to subscribe for 14 uh, or for 400 I guess uh, and then these are my silver dollars this is a 1935 uh, and this is a cool variety because this is the 1935S was the only one which, if you look right here, they have four rays beneath the one compared to, uh, like, the piece dollars I showed you earlier. Which, if you count the rays, there's only three compared to the four rays. So that, it's not an awfully rare variety. Uh, there's, like, 500,000. Uh, or no, I don't, I don't remember. But there is, uh, uh, it's the same amount of these was made as the 1935 without the four rays, but... I think, uh, I'd at least consider it rare, even though it's not, like, considered rare, uh, in, uh, the respect that people would pay more for it, just because of all the peace dollars only one year and one mint mark ever produced this variety. Uh, this is my worst condition, uh, Morgan Dollar. This is in 1879, and it has no mint mark, but I'm kind of glad it doesn't have a mint mark, just because in 1879, like, I'd rather have it this than, like, a CC. Because I wouldn't want a CC that would be that bad a condition. I would feel bad that it, uh, that it wouldn't be uh, what it could have been. And that one also does have... I don't know. I don't think they'd be chop marks. Just because I don't think that like those really went through chop marks. But they do have some uh, deep scratches in them. <clears throat> and then here, this is a 1902. And this one is a New Orleans minted. This one, I, I like the coloring on this one. It's kind of looks, it has like an antiqued look, like if you were to buy an antiqued coin. And a lot of the time, uh, like antiqued coins, I feel like don't actually look like an old coin. You can tell that they've just been made to look like that, but that one kind of does look like that. Um, this is an 1889. This is another New Orleans. So this one's pretty cool. This is a, I'm pretty sure a rarer date. It's not like an insanely rare date, but it's not as common. Uh, this is in 1921, and I, this is when I bought, uh, this is 1921 S, and it is, a uh, fairly good condition. I got this back when silver was $17 an ounce, so, part of me wishes I'd bought more silver, like, when it was cheaper, but at the same time, I know... Uh, I really couldn't have predicted a global pla uh, pandemic that would have uh, made silver prices go to a price that will never come down again. Uh, but yeah, this is another 1879. Uh, this one's in a lot better condition, though. Uh, this one is another Philadelphia. And then, finally, here is another 1902, and I believe this one is an... Uh, no mint mark. I thought it was an S, but... So, yeah, uh... This video's been going on for a while, but wait, there is still a bunch more. Here, this is just, uh, some... All the dimes I have that I've either bought or gotten, that these aren't my grandfather's, so these... I'll take a few out. Most of them are just, uh... Just normal dimes. They're not anything special, but... Some of them I'll take out because they're kind of cool. This is a U.S. Philippines with really cool toning. Nineteen forty-five, minted minted in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They do have uh, what I think is weird on this is the ridging on the edge is just so different. When I feel like it would have been a lot easier for the U.S. to just mint them with the same ridging. And I know these are smaller, but... Uh, 
the weeded edge is very different. Um, also, there's a few more that are pretty cool from the bag. So, there's this one, which this is just one I found in circulation, a Canadian dime from 1941. And then this, this is a uh, King George the Fifth. And this was, uh, I believe, uh, made when they were still doing large cents in Canada. This is 1917. And this would have been sterling silver compared to, like, this, which is, uh, I believe, only 80% silver. So that's just uh, interesting with the timing on that, that these are different uh, purities. Uh, and that's, that's all that's really cool in that bag. And then we have this whole bag, and this is filled with more silver coins so i think uh, i'm gonna do a second video for this though because this is already 21 minutes long uh so there's a ton of stuff in here that is still uh to go over and there's some foreign stuff in there and some interesting things that i'll pull out so thank you for watching uh if you've stuck around this long then uh if you would, I, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did enjoy the video, uh, please remember uh, that a uh, like and a sub do really help. And uh, if not, sorry for that, and uh, as always, uh, thank you, and have a great day.